Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Arrays of Living Live show. We are on the air. How is everyone doing today? I am I'm actually going live earlier than normal. I normally go live at noon, but today I'm going live at 10 a.m. because the individual that I am interviewing is across the globe in a completely different time zone. And we'll talk about that in a sack. The first couple of things is let's ensure that everyone um, coming into the chat, please identify yourself, um, you know, say hello, introduce yourself, share where you're from, and then any kind of appropriate tidbits and only appropriate, please. Thank you. <laughs> And during the show, I'll probably, I'm going to be asking questions. So feel free to respond in the chat or pose questions of your own or just, you know, or just comment on what you're hearing. That's how we keep the energy up and keep the, the chat going. And I will be checking the chat as it unfolds. And to get started, I am your host, Jen Dricks. And as always, I am passionate about life and passion about living it. And not just living it, living it to the fullest. <laughs> so today is our In Conversation episode in which I am joined by a guest and, and that guest will be coming in shortly. And I love these episodes because they're so interesting. And I have tried to make sure that the mix for 2021, and I keep saying that across this year, we have an amazing lineup of guests for our In Conversation With shows. And this one is no different. It will deliver that for sure. We just celebrated International Women's Day. <laughs> but this conversation, in addition to celebrating that in some at some level, it touches both men and women as well, believe it or not, children around the world. Today, I am speaking with Emma Southern, who also goes by the name of Lady Alopecia. And she supports and empowers people with all forms of hair loss. And that's what our discussion is about today. And Emma had the autoimmune condition and she's had it on and off ever since her mom died when she was 10 years old and she's now 34. <laughs> she got pretty severe in her mid twenties with the condition along with bouts of anxiety and depression as you can well imagine. Until she eventually asked her boyfriend, Andy, who is now her husband <laughs> to shave any remaining hair off and came clean about her condition for the first time at age 28. Wow. Before making that change, she was insecure, anxious, and constantly felt guilty that she was hiding something. In fact, she worked as an in-house agency copywriter, and although she liked the work, she had little confidence to interact with her peers. But since shaving her head, my goodness, she has never been happier. Let me bring Emma in. I cannot wait. Hi, Emma. Hi, Jen. <laughs> you had quite the introduction. You didn't get to hear it, but you have had quite the introduction. In fact, I mentioned about you getting alopecia at age 10 and just what you went through. And I talked about your copywriting days when you had no confidence and about asking Andy, who is now your husband, yeah. <laughs> to shave your hair. And that was the pivotal point of you kind of just taking hold, being authentic, being honest about it, and, a bit, and pretty much living a happier life. So... <laughs> From there, I tell them, I gave them a hint. I didn't tell them where you're where we're broadcasting from on your end. Where are we coming from? Where's a rays of living touching? So, across um, the globe? <laughs> I'm now in Hoi An, Vietnam. 
Oh, a beautiful <laughs> seaside town. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's fantastic. All the way from Vietnam, so don't say we don't have reach. That's fantastic. <laughs> but the the bad part about that is it's midnight or something like that where you are right now, right? It's not to us. It's 10 p.m. Yeah, but I'm as I said, okay, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm five months pregnant now, nearly. So this oh. is like midnight for me. <laughs> well, congratulations on Thank on you. the birth. You know, on the whole abundance of joy. Really, that's what they are. <laughs> I knew it was a baldy for me to meet. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations on that. And Andy's now your husband. So, so much has changed. And you are doing a lot of things. You have a website that is very focused on the condition. And one of the things, as I was researching to make sure I, you know, was versed in what it was and I understood, and I know people who suffer from it. So it wasn't that I was green, but I wanted to really get some information that 147 million people around the world are suffering with this and somewhat like 69 million in the U.S. alone. Uh, it's crazy. So, so it's, yeah. I'm, I'm going to hand the microphone over to you. You yes. tell us about a, a, a alopecia, lady alopecia. alopecia. <laughs> I should do my job. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, giving you the goddess. If I had that thing, I'd be fanning you. Give us the gift <laughs> on this. So it is, it's a, like you said, it's an autoimmune condition and it's a lot more common than people think. Um, I suppose when I was growing up with it, I kind of thought I was the only one. I didn't know anyone with hair loss or at least anyone who talked about it. And it's really only since setting up the website that even people maybe I haven't seen in a long time have opened up and said, you know, I used to have it too, or I know someone who did. And I think nowadays it's great. People are sharing more and more about it. Like on my side, I talk about Congresswoman Ayanna Presley and Jada Pinkett Smith and all these people who come out and say they've got hair loss and alopecia as well. So it's becoming a lot more visible, I think, mm -hmm. in the public eye. Um, and it's only since then really people are realizing how common it is, um, especially this past year since COVID, like there's more and more cases reported than ever. And I know myself, I'm getting a lot more emails, especially from parents of really young kids, mm -hmm. very sadly, who are getting it for the first time. And even people in their 50s who are getting it for the first time just from the, the stress of the thing. So it's even more common now, unfortunately, but um, that's why it's great to talk about it and to have this platform. <laughs> I am just I'm happy to to be discussing it because it has such reach and such touch. And in fact, you mentioned Jada Pinkett and I like I, I am I've scoped my boundaries. So I don't, haven't had cable for umpteen years. So I actually you just gave me new information. I did not even know that Jada suffered from it. So, yeah, yes. <laughs> so there you go. Right. Uh, so it's all it always helps these types of um, conditions when celebrities come, you know, they come out, they they're honest about it and they work. So hopefully that her voice in the mix is indeed giving it momentum and giving it attention, you, you know. Yeah. Um, so, OK, so now with all of that, what do you do specifically um, around kind of supporting and empowering. Tell me, or even go back a bit and talk about your journey, because I'd like to get a little and let the audience get a sense for your journey at such a young age, going into teenage years, you know, and then mid twenties, those are like the deaf years as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Many people say to me, would you go back to your twenties? Hell no, you know, they were the tough learning years. So, so talk about that a bit, because I do want you, also youth and young adults to truly understand um, this and to look at themselves differently from what magazines are projecting beauty is. So if you could take it away on that. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I found my, my first bald, bald patch about a month after my mum died. So I just turned 11 um, and I didn't really notice it at the time. I think because you're so young, I didn't really give it that much attachment. And obviously it's other things on my mind at that stage but um it was really I went to boarding school when I was 12 or 13 and it was like a mixed boarding school so a place with very little privacy um and what started as quite a small bald patch in the back of my head spread all upwards from the nape of my neck so it was kind of like a receding hairline um in the person who was like you know 14 at this stage 13 or 14 um and I could kind of cover it or I thought I could cover it with like little clips 
but when I'd have to play sport and I played a lot of sport, um, I was conscious of it all the time. I was I was quite a shy person anyway. I think losing my mum as well made me a little bit more vulnerable at that mm-hmm. age. Um, and like I said, there wasn't really many places to kind of hide, I suppose, or hide it. So it was always a sense of being very ashamed of trying to hide myself and not being like making too many weights, I suppose. Um, and in college, when I went into university, it was basically just getting worse and worse. Um, luckily in university, you know, you can kind of find a new style and all that. So I became the girl who wore headbands all the time. I just lived in headbands and I had big curly red hair. Like that was, it was- Oh, that wasn't helping hair. either. Yeah, I used to have big curly hair and everyone would always compliment because I was the only one in the family with this kind of unusual hair. Um, so the headbands, it, it, it wasn't as easy to cover really. Um, but I did my best. Um, Eventually then in my kind of early twenties, I was going through a lot of anxiety and depression about, I think probably mum's death and various things as well as the hair, but um, no doubt it didn't help the self-confidence. So eventually, I think in about my mid twenties, I'd lost about 80% of my hair. I was studying for masters at the time Mm -hmm. and quite a stressful time. And even by that stage, I'd already met my, my now husband um who was very lucky he met me when I still had almost a full head of hair just that kind of um receding hairline still a little bit and he could see under the headbands and you know we kind of had a conversation about it one night and he didn't run away luckily (laughs) (laughs) oh I don't know this Andy but I totally admire him that's fantastic he's a good good one one. he's a keeper (laughs) I wheeled him in by that stage yeah yeah um yeah, and he was actually the one then, well, before that, sorry. So before that, I'd lost about 80% of the hair. I started getting these like stick-on extensions that are actually meant for kind of wigs already, but I just stick them directly onto the bowl patches with some tape and ask Andy to do the same. But um, there was days when I'd leave and there'd be a, an extension stuck to my coat sleeve or something and the bowl patch just out. So it was always a sense of like kind of playing catch up and this thing had mm-hmm. so much control over me. Um, I later got a full wig, which gave me incredible confidence for about a year and a half. And that was when I was in the advertising agency. So I'd gotten my kind of first proper job in Ireland and um, was just around these really beautiful, really confident people. And I had my wig, so I felt confident at the start as well, but still always had this secret I was hiding. So I spent a year and a half working very closely with people who had no idea that you know, I'd I'd have to wear a headband over the wig to keep it in place. So I always had this style every day. I'd be really worried if we'd go to the pub for a drink after work and if there'd be a gust of wind or if I'd had to take off my hat that was covering the wig. All Um, all these like little anxieties. If we had a work trip, you know, I couldn't share a room or anything because they'd see me with my wig off. Um, So all these kind of little things were always in my head and I always felt like I was hiding. Um, And every time I'd come back into the apartment, myself and Andy shared, the wig would be the first thing I'd take off, um, like before my coat or before anything, because it was was really painful to wear. It was very, um, it had these jagged combs that would just dig directly into my scalp. (laughs) Um, because I had no hair to attach it to really so um, I'd throw that off and like he used to just say you know you look so beautiful without that and maybe he was just being kind but he said you really look like yourself and you look like fresh faced and beautiful and like I don't know maybe after a while I started to believe him or I just I wanted the freedom of it yeah repetition repetition, that's it it's it's rewriting uh, the narratives right as yeah but it, it's wonderful that it came from him like so, because you couldn't do it. So I he couldn't. did it for you mm-hmm. and, and you trusted him and loved him. So it, it resonated. If it was somebody else that you may not have trusted or loved, it might not have had the, the impact. But at what yeah. age, like at what age did you put a name to what was happening or with you? Or did you go like, did you ever seek um, professional um, input? At what yeah. age did you yeah. finally like put a name to what was going on so sorry yeah I should have mentioned I so no, that's I was, okay. <laughs> was probably I think my dad brought me when I was maybe 13 so mm-hmm. it was quite soon after I'd first discovered it maybe 12 or 13 like it um because like I said none of us had heard of it before none of us knew it was a thing and dad brought me um to in into Dublin at the time a trichologist so they're mm-hmm. like hair doctors especially right. Um, and to be honest, I've never had good experiences with trichologists or dermatologists or 
and I've seen a lot. I've seen an awful lot, and they're for. Uh, and now I know I'm generalizing, but in my experience, um, their first go-to is always to recommend steroid injections or steroid yeah. creams and mm -hmm. things that can work, but they're a very quick fix, and there's no kind of um, worry about the long-term effects. So. By the time I was 16, I was going to get these corticosteroid injections into my scalp um, very often. As a female, like, too, that is like... <laughs> yeah, so like 16-year-olds, you know, they're enjoying their time in school and whatever, and parties and all that, and I was going to get two buses across town to get these injections, and that would give me really bad headaches and really thin the skin of my scalp, and I got ongoing kind of gut and immune problems as a result. Um, so I'm, that's another reason for setting up my website is just to inform people that there's other options. But I know when you're desperate and you start losing your hair, you want to go to the specialist straight away. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was our first guy when I was maybe 12 or 13 that said alopecia. I didn't know there's different forms of it then. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that much known about it. Like the, there wasn't much on the internet or anything, at least I could understand. So I kind of just lived with it and accepted that. But mm -hmm apart from seeing these specialists and trying to get steroid creams i didn't know there's anything else i could do about it so i kind of just lived with it and blamed myself just for doing it to myself which yeah is and not thing. and not general and i agree not generalizing but we can only go on our lived experiences which is mm -hmm. what you're saying um is it do you think that they um they they um how should i say that they really recognize people are desperate when like they're to almost to a point of desperation because they're they're how they feel about themselves are tied to their looks because of so many societal you know we know why yeah. right yeah. um and so people i can imagine when you when you start losing your hair especially as a as a female more so than a male i know male goes go through it as well so nobody writes me and tell me i'm <laughs> <laughs> i'm making a lesser thing of it as a male but i think in society it's understood that male, some males may lose their hair. Mm -hmm. And even though ma males go through some emotional um, aspects and anxiety and depression about it as well, I think it's really impactful for women who are constantly you know, bombarded with this, what beauty supposedly looks like, right? Mm -hmm. And when you don't fit that, it's it, there's a sense of, there's a sense of loss. There's a sense of, imperfection there's a sense of not fitting in and i you know so then to go to what is supposed to be a professional and and maybe sensing that they're pulling on that thing to get help and so they sell you these things that you will buy you know what i mean and they're not really looking at the root are there any natural are there any natural um, methods to that like are there any natural things you could take that you've discovered over the years helps? There are. Now, unfortunately, I know nothing's worked for me long term. Okay. Um, okay. I still have the alopecia, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm not very good with the whole consistency thing. I think because since I have kind of accepted it and been happier with the shaved head than before, um, like for me, what I find was causing me more anxiety was trying to find a miracle cure and always seeking and always searching and that was causing me just more stress so mm -hmm. since kind of accepting oh it might never grow back I've been a lot happier and sometimes it does grow back and but there are um for anyone who writes in I would recommend there's some really good natural things like peppermint essential oil um rosemary essential oil castor oils it's brilliant natural oils basically for hair growth aloe vera it's amazing for bringing down inflammation on your scalp. Um, mm -hmm. So you can either eat it for inflammation in the gut or you can rub the fresh stuff on your scalp. Um, so I talk about a good few treatments on the site, but I'd always advocate natural remedies. One thing I did find that worked quite quickly was actually a raw onion um, split in half and rubbed directly on the patches. And I noticed white fuzz growing back after a couple of weeks, but I didn't want to smell like a stir fry every <laughs> night. <laughs> so it was pretty stinky. I was rubbing that in garlic and ginger and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, people do find a lot of um, good results when they stick with it. Oh, okay. Um, but my main, my main thing I've noticed now, and this is only the last really year or so, um, and other alopecians I've talked to have said the same is going on an anti-inflammatory diet. So really watching because alopecia is often linked to kind of gut problems as well. Oh. Um, and it's a lot of inflammation stuff going on. So if you've any sensitivity, 
sensitivity to things like gluten or dairy, eggs, tofu, all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, we're all very different, but this is something that seems to be a common factor. Um, and I was on the late panel of researchers for Alopecia UK, and they've actually seen, they're doing studies into a link between celiac disease and hair loss and finding okay. some links there. So it's quite interesting stuff. So that's, and I don't think those dermatologists I mentioned before, I don't think they're just doing it to market to vulnerable people, like that mm -hmm. could be part of it. But I generally think they just maybe are a bit more um, narrow minded in their focus. So they, they know one thing and that's what they've learned and they're not willing to look at the holistic approach. Whereas Yeah, doctors, well, that's, that's even irrespective of alopecia. I find mm. you are, if, you, if your doctor doesn't believe in the natural approaches, there's always a, a, a battle going on between you and them, right? Because they want to prescribe and you don't want to, you don't want a prescription. You want to, you know, you want a method to manage it. Yeah. Um, and natural cures might take longer. But mm. some of them actually do work. You don't need to take a yeah. prescription. And and alopecia, like it's it's not an acute illness that you need medical. Like I totally do believe in medication for acute illnesses um, and for you know life saving treatments that they can mm. offer. But in terms of chronic things, it's really more about lifestyle measures and like you say, things that you can use to manage to manage your condition. And alopecia is one of those factors. So it's not really sustainable, especially for young kids to be taking courses of steroids um to manage their hair loss it's more about kind of lifestyle factors and sometimes unfortunately like it is just one of these tricky things there's so many things involved there mightn't be one quick solution so it might be a case of having to live with it for a good few years maybe longer um it'll come back when it's ready hopefully in a lot of cases it does come back with a treatment um in mine like I said, up and down, <laughs> um, but but that's okay. I wouldn't uh, be Lady Alopecia without it, so I wouldn't be much about it. <laughs> and I love that, as I said, every time you say it, <laughs> I love the name. I love the name. But oh what God. I what I what I also love is you said that there's no real there's no real cure, but I think you have found the cure. In my mind, mm -hmm. it's called acceptance. <laughs> yes, it well, acceptance. We are, made, yes. we're all made. We're all made perfect. We're all made perfect. And if alopecia happens to be in your life, then just acceptance. Look how happy. Like, this is why I brought you on the show, because you you reach that piece of, you know, of peace and happiness with it. And I think that's your ultimate message. At least that's what I'm taking from it. And I'm hoping that's what the audience takes. And if you're a young person, because I, you know, I, I stream on Twitch. This is being uh, streamed on Twitch to my young uh, followers. And... I want them to hear a message of acceptance, right? Stop fighting it. Stop, you know, stop, just accept it. And if things, you know, if you happen to come across something that somebody says might work, try it like you're doing, you know, you try. And if you can keep it up, great, but don't let it define your whole day, your whole moment, your whole life. Look at, look to Emma. <laughs> <laughs> well done. like I did I let it control me for so long and yeah. then I said you know what it's, it's had enough of my life it's had enough of my headspace there's a lot more to a person than hair or mm -hmm. lack thereof um and I actually I got a message or a comment a few few weeks back from a father who has um his little girl is only six and she has alopecia and she oh. tells people like you know this is my thing and everyone has their thing and I just think that's amazing like that's she's amazing and she just has this confidence um and if we could all retain that kind of joy yeah. and confidence and simplicity about it it's yeah we all have a thing we all have insecurities um exactly. and I think a lot of people with alopecia are like I know I was you're always worried that people are looking at you you're always worried people will notice you're wearing a wig but people are too caught up in their own insecurities. So half the time they're not, they're not paying you the attention they think you think they are. So you might as well just be happy and enjoy, enjoy your days. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I I think I think you each person really controls how people um interact with them. And uh, honesty and sh and just sharing, you probably would have been really surprised at the reaction you would have gotten. Because people attract to authenticity, and you know, you, you I know it when you were young, and you know, you what you weren't kind of sure of your own self. But I, I have a feeling if you had kind of, or at least I hope that if you had shared it with your coworkers in an honest, 
authentic way, they would have embraced it and they would have supported you and recognized. I think there's, you know, there's more good out there. than oh, They would have. They would have. Yeah. And when I, when I was ready, yeah. like eventually, like Andy did shave my head for me and I went away on a kind of trip. When I came back, I did this Facebook post just announcing it with my bald head or whatever. <laughs> and the reaction I got off that, I was so scared pressing send. Um, and the reaction just blew me away. Like it was, I don't think it was people just, you know, being kind for the sake of it. So many no, people that no. messaged me privately to say about their own kind of insecurities, their own um, plights of hair loss. A lot of them guys as well, which is interesting. And it's just, it's the most uplifting thing. And it's kind of what spurred me on to set up Lady Alopecia to do um, this kind of work, because I think talking about it, sharing about this sort of stuff yeah. is just, it's so healing. Um, and I can tell you, because I knew what alopecia was when we communicated and mm -hmm. I went to the site and I saw your picture, that was the final like decision point for me because I, my reaction was she rocks. This is a <laughs> badass boss lady here. <laughs> Right That's on my this screaming topic. face. One. No, I'm serious and I don't swear, right? But <laughs> but I was like, that was my reaction. I'm telling you, my authentic reaction was she rocks and I am going to be talking to her, right? So don't don't even go there. You no more post a picture and worry about what people because yeah, you're rocking no. it. You really not are, anymore. Right? Like I'm now I'm I'm <laughs> leaning into it now. I'm definitely I think there was always this like inner diva in me that was dying to come out. Yes. So um and like now with more bald head I have more of a canvas <laughs> to kind of put on, you know, feather and glitter and whatever. Um so it's more like inspiration and I lean into that kind of fancy dress side of stuff and that helps me do the rocking it style. Like yes, say, you are rocking it, it, child, and you are gorgeous. So <laughs> I, you. so you stop your nonsense, and you're about to have a beautiful bundle of joy. And you know what's amazing about kids? Mm -hmm. They love you unconditionally. They yes. are not going to shoot that one. <laughs> Whether it's a girl or a boy, they're not going to give a hoot's rat they won't get bottom <laughs> about what you're here. <laughs> That's a you <laughs> thing. <laughs> So you you keep you keep rocking it. You keep rocking it. I love that. So let's talk. In your in in one of the things you talked about yoga for alopecia. And I and my head went like okay, I take yoga, I do yoga. And what is yoga for alopecia, please? So <laughs> this is yeah, this is a course I created um November of last year, and I'm gonna do another one at the end of this month, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's I set it up in response to all the new emails I got this year from people with stress and alopecia for the first time, people who'd never had it before. Um, and they were looking for kind of ways, a lot of them had said, you know, I've gone to doctors and the doctors have told me to try to reduce stress as much as I can, or else they've recommended steroids and they're wanting to take a more natural route. So um, I'm a yoga teacher as of the last two years. Um, I also teach mindfulness and meditation and it's really what helped me mm -hmm. to accept my alopecia for the first time. And I do, you know, meditation practice daily. If I let it slip, I'll notice the anxiety coming back in. Um, so it's kind of what helps keep me grounded. And I do get, you know, stares and comments every day. And if I didn't have that sort of centering work, then it would knock me a lot easily, more easily. So when I had these messages from people, I just thought this seems like serendipity or something. It mm -hmm. seems like these two parts of my life are coming together and that this is something I could share with people. So um, yoga for alopecia, basically, I, I don't promise to make people's hair grow back or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew where was going when I asked the question and when I read it, I was like, OK. Yeah, no, it's not good. <laughs> I'm you know, so glad you about, corrected that. Yeah, Trust me, no, there's some people, there's some people out there thinking that, right? Okay. But yeah. so glad you said that. Go ahead. I'll clarify. I'll clarify. Um, <laughs> so, like, what yoga does is it reduces inflammation and can boost the immune system. So, right. alopecia is a huge amount of time. It is that inflammation, whether it's from the foods you're eating, or from stress, or hormonal changes. It's a chronic condition, and chronic inflammation is one of the kind of biggest 
triggers of it and it's the hard thing to reduce so that's why i say natural stuff like aloe vera and things like that or anything to bring down inflammation mm -hmm. but practices that you do in yoga like there's various um, we call them pranayama so it's breathing mm -hmm. exercises and they're yep. very powerful been around for centuries you'll know them yourself yeah yeah, yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are amazing like some are for it to give you energy but others are to really calm down the nervous system and that's what you want to do and cleanse um, and, and cleanse, cleanse yeah. yeah and if if we have things like alopecia, we'll most likely be in the sympathetic nervous system. So it's a kind of fight or flight response. It's flooded with adrenaline and cortisol and we're feeling stressed all the time. Even if we don't feel it, sorry, it's more like an underlying stress um, that will like will respond the same way to a missed bus or a missed deadline than we would to a tiger. And that's mm -hmm. it's hard to get out of that stress state. So these kind of breathing exercises and the kind of yoga I teach is all about calming the nervous system back to a kind of baseline. So that's one part is the reducing inflammation. The other part is the kind of boosting your immune system in general, things like exercise, um, meditation, and all this sort of stuff does keep your in immune system supported and healthy and strong. Um, so just the act of movement. And mm -hmm. of course that will increase circulation as well. And some of the poses we do are inversions which include or which boost circulation to the scalp. So you're getting more nutrients, more blood flow, more minerals and all that sort of stuff to your head. <laughs> so it's quite literally bringing more stuff down to your head. So I'd include a lot of that sort of stuff. And that's all about more energizing poses as well. If you're feeling stuck or lethargic or really down about your condition. Um, so that's the yoga side of it. But I suppose the main benefit that the people who did the course have told me about is the kind of mindfulness and meditation aspect. So um, I follow, I asked them to do kind of a program with, where we do a daily meditation. I recorded at the start of the week and they do a, a daily meditation that includes positive affirmations, which I think is very important, like you say, to change that narrative, the way you feel about yourself um, mm -hmm. to help you find that acceptance and mindfulness just to start being maybe more accepting of the present moment, be grateful for the things um all the little miracles kind of around us and to accept that which we can't change um and when we can learn that and kind of make contentment your default setting then you'll just notice how the stress kind of can not to disappear totally but you'll be able to deal with it and you can face these sort of challenges um and maybe your hair won't grow back straight away but it's these sort of lifestyle measures yeah that will that can really promote hair growth and that can prevent it falling out again in the first place um i know myself like if i was in a time of stress my hair can shed quite quickly um whereas if i'm kind of on a more of a baseline and practicing these healthy lifestyle habits um then i can keep that at bay and even see regrowth so that's okay. what the course is kind of about and it was a chance for me to connect with fellow alopecians as well which was just amazing just having these sort of chats and these women had never, they didn't have alopecia before. They didn't really know it was a thing. So just being able to talk with each other mm -hmm. and support each other through it was a really helpful part for, for me too. <laughs> and, and and is it in person or is it virtual? How is it um, conducted? It's virtual now. So I do kind of the courses created that a lot of it is sent out um, that they can do it in their own time, like every day. Um, or I send out a basically a weekly email with a, and access to a hub where they have all the modules and content but we do a live class every week and have a little chat before and after so okay. that's optional the chat i know time zones don't always work but um i used to record it at night time here in vietnam so <laughs> it was daytime for those in the states or morning time mm -hmm. um, but yeah that was one of my favorite parts just to kind of connect with them and have a little chat afterwards because the community aspect i think is very important in, in all of this and how does the audience um, get to that? Is it through the um, ladyalopecia.com website? Sure, yeah, it's ladyalopecia.com. Okay. And then I think it's forward slash yoga for alopecia. Okay, so you, you've you got that. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's make sure. So I With repeat. a couple of hyphens in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's ladyalopecia.com yeah. forward slash yoga hyphen for hyphen alopecia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go and check out the course. Um, it sounds like a, it, more so than than the yoga, though, is the whole support mechanism there yeah. and talking to like minded that are going through the same experience and dealing with it together. And there's nothing, you know, more beautiful than that. So and, yeah, and just to give practical tips, because a lot of people, especially like it's so frustrating and such a scary thing to experience that it, 
it's very easy to just get carried away and fall down a spiral of negative thoughts and mm -hmm. you know looking at your hair every five minutes and wanting to seek miracle cures so needing practical tips like little bits of mindfulness um writing it down he's like writing prompts as well and sort of habit releasers to change the kind of negative thought patterns in your mind as well, working with the neuroplasticity. So all these kind of little techniques um, are just designed to kind of help you get have a more mindful way of living. And when you're, you can practice mindfulness, you can be more accepting of things like alopecia. So simple little tricks, but quite effective. And, and at one point, um, also in our community, you said that um confidence is attractive self-confidence is attractive and i can you can you expand on that thought that you had i thought it was a, a powerful statement i agree with it but i'd like to hear from your words yeah that, so i think i think my um my perceptions of beauty have changed a lot and while it's attractive you know i used to think it was people with you know long hair and a perfect body because that's what we're conditioned to think mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of the time um but it was going through this, you know, when I'd lost my hair, I had to kind of force myself to look inwards and see what else could be beautiful. Um, Andy had told me all the time, you know, it's the confidence that's beautiful. Um, personally, I think it's things as well, like kindness, your actions are the things that speak the most. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what people notice, you know, when I did that coming out post on Facebook with the hair, people said, it's always your smile I notice first. It's not your hair and things like yes. that. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, but yeah, I think like um, there's a lot more like the idea of beauty. There is also the kind of beautiful acts we do. And I think I don't think of myself really as conventionally beautiful. I certainly don't look like any of the pictures in magazines, but I know that there's a lot of beauty in me and that I have a lot of beauty to offer others. And I think oh. that's what's more attractive than. Oh, you know, Emma, I, I like <laughs> Uh, hands down agree my gosh you know i'm not i'm i'm i can say the same thing for myself right i'm mm -hmm. not i i do not believe i'm a you know a magazine type beauty but i do believe i am extremely beautiful and that comes well, from the inner it. out <laughs> exactly <laughs> you can see it in people you know for yes people. i think authenticity yeah. is beautiful and authenticity leads to confidence which leads to beauty but I loved when you said, you know, self-confidence is, and it's attractive. That That's the other thing, right? Not just beauty. It's attractive. It's um, it's just engaging. Right? Yeah, that's sorry. That's a word for, yeah, it does. It attracts people towards you. If you're, yes. if you're content in yourself, people will gravitate towards you because they'll want some of that. And they don't want to go, <laughs> you know, how do I I, I've that? never been able to pinpoint what it is, but I do know it attracts. <laughs> mm, it doesn't yeah. detract. And, and, and you know if people if more people understood this they would they would be a lot the world will be a lot more healing you know yeah. than it is right now so but that's that's wonderful i wanted to really explore that that piece and you also apparently are writing your memoirs so tell yes. us about that yes um yeah so it started i'm in a writer's group at hoi an who are very supportive and very lovely um so i started writing my memoir last year and i've just finished the second draft so i'm hoping to self-publish and it'll be going out through my lady alopecia channels and through my newsletter and everything hoping i'm due with my first child now at the end of august so that's a good deadline for me to work towards <laughs> beforehand um but the working title is becoming lady alopecia when i lost my hair and found myself so it's, um, it's all about kind of grief and loss mm -hmm. and how you can come the kind of premise of the book is how sometimes the greatest gifts in life are the ones we don't ask for so how you can use your your grief and your trauma and turn your pain into purpose, so to speak. Absolutely, as um, I know Dean and Tony say, is turn your mess into a message. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, that's what they tend to say, but you've, <laughs> said, it, you've said it another way beautifully as well. Um, and absolutely, all of these things are lessons to, um, are lessons to learn, but also it grows you. And when you look back, I'm sure now if you stop, I don't know if you do, I'm a very reflective person. So I'm always stopping and looking back at the journey. And I'm sure if you look back, the person that you were and the person that you are now, you probably couldn't even have imagined that. And that is because of the pain. That's because of the, you know, of the journey that you had. So never regret it. <laughs> Totally, totally. Yeah, and it's taken me it. it's going back through the memoirs and going back to myself at different ages that you realize that. So for anyone 
going through the pain of things like alopecia anything really at the moment there mm -hmm. is there is purpose to it eventually yeah. there will be a lesson there and you can learn a lot from it yeah um so you know try not to be so focused on how to get out of that position you're in and see the kind of gifts you could learn from it or at least you will one day and barricade your, yourself from societal messaging like literally barricade yourself because I, some of those messages are just so like they're so damaging they're damaging. They hit our subconscious and they stick even though we don't realize it, right? So the way to also, especially for the ones I'm, I'm like, I'm concerned for all, but I my heart breaks at the young kids that may not be getting the nurturing and the message like what Andy gave to you, you know, depending on who they're surrounded by and living with the pain of this. I, I just want them to know that you know, there's there's a support mechanism. There's a way to get help, but just barricade yourself from the societal message and seek out um, those that can help and support because that their messaging will be very different. It will be Definitely. one of love, right? It yeah, will come from I agree, a, yeah. a you place need to, of love. Yeah, you need to surround yourself with like positive people and positive attributes. I know yeah. every, not everyone can be sunshine and rainbows all the time, exactly. but you know, in general, people that you will make you feel good about yourself and you'll very quickly identify the kind of toxic elements in your life once you do start <laughs> that reflection, whether it's, you know, people or activities or too much social media and, and there's nothing wrong with social media in general. You know, there can be really inspirational people on things like Instagram and there's some amazing alopecia kids, for example, um, who are really inspiring and I share them with share their stories with kind of the parents who write into me to show you know kids can be really happy um going through this condition um but yeah it's the toxic stuff that you want to avoid and it's the stuff that makes you feel like less just because you don't look like them mm -hmm. um there's some yeah there's some good accounts like things like face equality international there's various organizations that are really more positive to kind of follow and have a really good message and i think it's there there's a uh, um a message to to separate um, the condition from the beauty piece. Separate, mm -hmm. it's a condition, deal with it as a condition as best as you can, but separate it from the beauty. It has nothing to do, nobody walks around looking at your head. And even for men, like I'm a person that loves bald men. Mm -hmm. I have no issue with a man <laughs> being bald. So I'm always amazed when I hear these stories of some of the extreme things that men do um, when they're and and the amazing thing is I've found um, because I have uncles that that um, had alopecia all of them mm -hmm. and I was always amazed that they lost their hair it suited them so I used to always say but God made you knowing you were going to lose your hair to yeah. actually look good with it. like you know what I mean like there was yeah. nothing they actually were more handsome with the loss of hair than before and I was always I remember amazed at that you know i had yeah. these handsome uncles and they and i love bald men so guys there's there's people out there that love you bald totally. <laughs> Stop totally. stressing over it. Yeah. and ladies you can rock it we are fashion z you can rock it. it has nothing to do with beauty you are beautiful irrespective so go with yeah, it it's right just something like it makes you unique it gives you a different style you know why blend in with everyone else when you can kind of have your own your own thing as that girl said exactly um, yeah definitely okay so i'm gonna get you back to bed i'm gonna wrap <laughs> up this conversation is there anything say whatever plug you want say whatever you want to say um and then i'll wrap up the show and get you get you to bed madam okay well great uh, thank you so much jen for having me much appreciated um i would just say for people like my one main message is kind of what lady alopecia is all about it's not about really treatments or cures it's about just practicing self self-compassion and being kind to yourself because we can be our own worst enemies and our own harsher harshest critics um so just by practicing a little bit of self-love um that'll change how other people see you too so so people can remember that message and they can contact me through lady alopecia as well excellent so you you've heard all of all of that so 
Thank you, Emma, for joining me. I really appreciate you staying up later than your bedtime. <laughs> Thank you for pushing it back. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I was so looking forward to this discussion and it truly has delivered. In wrapping up, I am Jen Drakes. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please, depending on your preferred platform, remember to like the show, subscribe, hit that subscribe or follow button and follow the show, leave ratings and reviews. That's how we grow by telling people what you enjoyed. And please share all the love. The podcast audio um, episode will be posted shortly. So you can, you'll be able to download that from Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Amazon, Lip Sync, Apple or Google and more much more and uh, mark your calendars. Our next show will be coming up shortly and we'll be back here in at our noon hour with, uh, with just me. But until then, <laughs> we'll be chatting with you soon. Thank you very, very much.